watched my last video, and you know I said if there's one thing you can take away from my videos, leave it in the comments box below. Right now, it's just one of those mornings where I know it's going to be a good day. Just have fun with whatever you're doing. Have a goal in mind. And just, who cares what anyone else thinks? If you love what you're doing, then that's all that matters. First time driving to the gym and it's light out. You guys can actually see me. Yes, I'm wearing a hat. What do we think? I love hats. Saturday morning, the gym doesn't open till 7 o'clock on the weekends. So I got to sleep in for a little bit, which is very nice. Heading to Retro right now. Yesterday was Friday, and I just went to the school gym and strictly just hit shoulders. And it doesn't happen too much. Sometimes I just throw them in there when I do like back or buys or something like that. But just did shoulders and I like that because I'm able to do more than just two or three shoulder exercises and to strictly focus on that. So that went well. Now I wanted to do heavy deadlifts today. We'll see how well that goes because this morning my abs and like my obliques are so sore. It's kind of sore where when you cough you can feel it. So And I train abs twice a week, every week. So I don't know what it was yesterday that made him so sore today, but we're going to head into the gym, sipping on the pre-workout, and it's the pre-workout from the grenade. I'll show you that to you. Orange pineapple, sipping on that. Very good. Small, there's only five servings in here. Let's see. So we got that right here. Very good. I did have it yesterday too, so this is the second time I'm trying it. I like it. Flavor's really good and mixes very well so it's not as like gritty as some pre-workouts or any mixes in general will be like got that heading to the gym we'll see how heavy we can go last time you saw me do deadlifts i did 10 singles at 175 we'll see if we get there again but let's head into the gym and i'll see you guys later what's up guys sorry i am not in the corner of your screen today but just want to go over a few things really quickly and then I'm going to get into a deeper topic. But what you already have seen before is basically me having a terrible time with deadlifts. I was doing it off the block, so I just have a 35-pound plate on the ground there. And with these plates, it's so hard to, you know, hit the ground and then go back up and do rep after rep. You kind of have to reset everything. So I ended up just putting 35s on the bar and doing three sets of 10. And just kind of called it a day for deadlifts. I just was not feeling it. And... I just I know my back is my weak point, which is why I'm setting up rack pulls right here. But I was already sore in my abs during this workout, and then I really overdid it with these rack pulls. Because right now, as I'm editing this, I am so sore because I get hit by a bus. So I think I overdid it in this exercise here. So I have two 25 plates on the bar, I believe it was, and did five sets of five and this killed me guys it really did um but it was a good workout i highly re recommend it for everyone and then i did hack squat here first time using it this way but i liked it this is definitely more quad dominant which i had my feet set up but you can obviously change that for whatever is necessary for you it's definitely something that i want to incorporate more into my leg workouts so then of course I did the hip abduction and hip abductor but you guys have seen that before so just back to back sets of three I had to show you one because I think it gets pretty repetitive with well, this exercise here it's like the lat pull down on the machine but I like to do it standing and it really hits the lower back can kind of adjust how far away you are your feet so you can hit the right area of the back that you need but I really like it and it's something that I've started to do probably twice a week and now just in this workout video look at those calves I mean they're just huge I should probably tone it down on the calf workouts okay even course hope you guys enjoy the rest of this video thank you what's up guys so this part of the video is going to be more informational because I know my viewers kind of range from people that do watch other fitness YouTubers or to family members and friends who may not be watching other fitness YouTubers who are doing other fitness YouTube things that I do. So some things that you see me do might be confusing, so this part is just going to 
kind of explain everything pretty quickly, briefly, just so you have an idea of where I'm coming from. This helps if you have seen me do food challenges before. I recently did one Saturday. I just want to show you how doing cheat meals, cheat days, food challenges, or refeed days makes sense and is logical. So in the fitness industry, you're doing one of two things normally. You're either cutting, where you're in a calorie deficit, taking in less calories, or you're bulking and you're in calorie surplus. So you're eating more calories to put on weight. So if you're in a calorie surplus, you're eating more, your goal is to put on more muscle, and with that you're going to put on some more fat as well. So you're just going to be bigger in size, and you're going to do that for however long that you need. Usually it's for quite a few months at a time. Then you're going to want to cut. This could be cutting because you're cutting for a show. You know, you're going to get on stage, doing any modeling. You're, maybe you just want to cut for spring break or for the summer. Whatever it is, you want to lean out, drop some weight. So you're going to be in the calorie deficit. So you're taking in less calories, meaning that you are going to lose some weight. And when you're doing that, your body is in deficit. So it's taking in less calories than it normally would be. So example, you're going to have a cheat meal. So you pick one meal out of the week and you don't track it. You don't watch what you're taking in. You just kind of free, eat whatever you want, have whatever cravings you want. No problem. Because then the six days out of the week, you're tr tracking everything, keeping tally of what you're eating because you are cutting. A cheat day means you pick the whole day, you're dining again for six days, maybe the seventh day, you just say, all right, put the phone away, not going to track any food, just going to eat as my body feels because I have been in this deficit, I'm feeling sluggish because after all, food is energy, especially carbs, that's where you're going to get your most energy from. So you pick this one day, you're going to just go eat whatever you want, maybe go out eat with family, whatever it is, you have that burger or ice cream that you've been craving so long. But while you are cutting, your macros don't exactly allow you to have that. So that's why I do it. A refeed day is the same thing, but it's more controlled. So a refeed day is, all right, I've been having less calories. I want to boost my energy up and get a little bit more calories in this day. So I'm going to do it this way. You still track what you have, but maybe you're upping the carbs. You can keep your protein the same, but up your carbs, maybe up your fat as well. That way for the next few days, you your body is using that extra food that you had one day to get through the rest of the days and it's kind of just a cycle so cut 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 or you're just in maintenance whatever it is and you have one refeed day where you're controlling how much food you're taking in but you're making sure that normally you're here and you're bringing up your calories maybe to here so that is just a quick rundown you know the food challenges so it's one food challenge that I've done in months as you can tell on my channel I don't have very many and people aren't doing food challenges every single day. They do it every once in a while. Maybe they know they need to eat a little bit more food one day. So instead of having a cheat meal cheat day, they said, all right, I'm going to go do a challenge. I'm going to go to a restaurant. I'm going to do their challenge. Or I've seen this has been popular on YouTube, so I want to try this challenge. But they're not doing it every single day, and they know how to make it work and fit and have fun. And half of it is just honestly for entertainment. But yesterday, Saturday, I did the 40 chicken nugget challenge for McDonald's that's been done on YouTube a ton of times I just thought I haven't done one in a while so why not give it a try but a lot of people watching this aren't in the fitness industry and I understand that so I just want to break it down of why that is okay and why I'm still here today I didn't gain a bunch of weight I'm not fat I'm not dying because the food was fast food or anything like that so let's take a look at what exactly was in those 40 chicken nuggets so because I love doing the book review like this and I got a lot of good feedback I thought I would use this type of editing again. So 40 McDonald's Chicken Nugget Challenge. In the 40 nuggets you have 1,880 calories. Sorry you can't see that. The suggested calorie intake for an average person, now I say average because this is just your typical everyday person, 2,000 calories. Would you look at that? Then chicken nuggets are less than the average calorie intake for someone. So now let's break it down and see what makes up the 1,880 calories in the nugget. So we're going to focus on fats, carbs, and proteins. 118 grams of fat, and just so happens to be the same for carbs, and 87 grams of protein. All right, that's good. Now this is what I will typically aim for in a day to eat. Now this is only if I'm tracking, that's why I say not always. 
because I don't track every day. So for my fats, we have 50 to 70 grams. Carbs is anywhere from 240 to 280. will vary depending on what I'm doing. Under 155 grams of protein. So now let's look at the two things side by side. Again, looking at fats, carbs, and proteins. So you'll notice that the only difference, really, is that the fats were greater in the chicken nuggets than what I'll typically have. Oh my goodness, but wait, we're gonna be okay, and this is why. So, as you can tell, fats were higher, carbs were lower, and protein was lower. So today, kept my fats lower to balance out the extra fat that I had yesterday. For carbs, Obviously, I didn't reach my carb goal for yesterday, so later that day, I did get hungry again because, again, there's only 1,800 calories. And normally, I'm taking anywhere from 2,100 to maybe 2,300 calories a day, give or take. And I don't always track. I'll track occasionally, but right now, I've kind of just intuitive eating, which is just eat as you feel you need. But mentally, I kind of have an idea of what I'm taking in just because I did track for so long. But anyway, so I did have some more carbs last night, and I also made sure to hit my protein goal, which is about 155 grams, because I only got 87 grams of protein from the chicken nuggets. Now, today is the day after, so what I still want to do is keep my fats lower, which I have done, but I've upped my carbs, just a little bit, making sure that I do hit my goal of probably 250 today, and will hit my protein goal easily, no problem. But it's all about balance. So this challenge isn't going to set me back in any way. It's not going to make me fat or unhealthy or anything. I didn't wake up 10 pounds heavier. Actually, I, I didn't weigh myself because I'm not worried about that. But you can kind of tell whether you feel hungry, not hungry bloated, not bloated in the morning, and I felt totally normal, actually. Like I said before, I drink about a gallon and a half of water, but because of all sodium and saltiness from the 40 chicken nuggets, I upped my water intake to, I had two gallons, and then of the third gallon, I probably had a quarter, so two gallons and a quarter of, extra, of water yesterday, just to replenish my system, because all that sodium. Woke up this morning, totally fine. I did cardio this morning. Now, I Big thing is, I didn't do cardio because I did this challenge. I do cardio three to four times a week, every week, doesn't change. But I didn't, you know, go and do it for two hours because I did this and I felt bad about myself. I didn't up the intensity, I just went about it normally like I would anyway. Because it's just one challenge and it was not that crazy anyway. 40 chicken nuggets, 1800 calories, not that bad. I was still able to eat later, I'm eating today back on track, no problem. I just wanted to go over that very quickly because I know a lot of people watching these videos right now are a lot of family and friends and you're not watching other fitness YouTubers. So just want to put that out there. Challenges like that are for pure entertainment. You guys, like, you guys like watching people eat, so that's what it's for. I hope you did enjoy it. Hope you enjoyed this video as well. This is going to be it to wrap up episode 10 already. So I'll see you guys Wednesday, 9 a.m. Eastern Time for episode 11. Say thank you all for watching this. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do. As always, have a great week. Thank you guys, and I'll see you later.